What's going on there folks? Good afternoon. The Earthmaster here on this uh, last day of 2021. It is about 12.49 p.m. California time. Um, of course, December 31st, 2021. Good riddance to 2021, right? Latest earthquake out there on the globe, a 2.5 earthquake, somewhat deep. You can see the ring raised off of the globe here in the Hawaii area. It's going to be right there around the southeast flank. Uh, we have seen some further activity not only in Hawaii kicking up overnight, but also the west coast and more specifically down in the southern California region where we've seen a, a little bit of swarming activity right around the Palomar Observatory once again. And um, also around the uh, area up to the north here around the Banning area, seen a 3.5. Uh, actually, this is around the Redlands area. 15.2 kilometers deep within this region. Also some further activity up here to the north near Little Creek, a 1.3. Uh, this is on the San Jacinto Fault area. Pretty lengthy fault system that runs secondary to the San Andreas Fault over here to the east. But also back behind this San Jacinto Fault zone, we have the uh, another lengthy large fault known as the Elsinore Fault Zone. And uh, today and over the last couple weeks or so, we've been seeing a pretty good swarm of activity around the Palomar Observatory. Of course, that's on the Pacific side of the plate boundary. I'm gonna show you guys, uh, can't really see too well on this map. They do define, they do show the uh, Elsinore Fault System here on the west side of this mountain where all the swarming activity is taking place, but there's segments within this mountain here uh, that we can see more defined on this map, uh, also from the USGS. I don't know why they don't show it on their other maps, but anyway, Palomar Mountain here. We got a couple segments of the of the Elsinore Faults system. This here is the uh, Julian Julian section. Runs pretty far up to the north. We'll check that out here in just a minute and show you uh, where it kind of ends there in the uh, Los Angeles area. These are little segments of that fault system here. Kind of ends over here on the eastern side of the mountain where we run into the San Felipe Fault Zone. Uh, another somewhat lengthy fault system. California is just a spider web complex of faults all over the place. And one of the one of these days, you're going to have a big one down there. I think it's going to be sooner than later. Of course, we've been hearing that for how many years now? Quite a long time. So the activity around the Palomar Observatory is occurring right around this mountain here that sits at about 1871, eight, 1,871 meters um, as far as the elevation goes. And it's really close, really close to this, this segment right here of the Elsinore Fault, uh, which runs, of course, parallel with the other faults out here. It's got a uh, accumulation rate of up to 4 mm a year. This one here is saying 5. I was looking at a little research on this specific fault system here. Uh, it is a large right lateral strike slip. Uh, geological fault structure in Southern California, of course. The fault is part of a trilateral split of the San Andreas Fault System and is one of the largest, though quietest, faults in Southern California. That's not really the case over the last couple weeks. It's been pretty active. Uh, it is 110 kilometers long, or uh, 180 kilometers, 110 miles long with a slip rate of 4. See that? 4.0 millimeters a year. Uh, it is estimated that this zone is capable of producing a quake around 6.5 to 7.5 magnitude. And these guys here stating the uh, projected interval between major rupture events is 250 years. And the last major rupture event on the main Elsinore Fault was in 1910. Elsinore Fault was, yeah, 1910 with a 6, right? Magnitude 6 earthquake centered just northwest of the city of Lake Elsinore. So that's not even really a full potential of what this fault system can do. So who knows when the last full rupture of this fault system was capable, capable of producing that size uh, of an earthquake. Um, and, and even though these guys are saying the last major, it doesn't say last full rupture event. So I believe accumulated stress is high enough there to produce this type of magnitude earthquake pretty soon. I was looking at some uh, historical data, just specifically within this square. You can kind of see where I outlined a uh, 6.0 earthquake and above. Look at this, what we're looking at here. We got the Palomar Mountain, 
You got the Elsinore Fault that runs all the way up here. We have not seen a uh, anything above a 6.0 in at least since records have been kept here in the um, in on the Elsinore Fault system. Even though the Wikipedia article states 6.0 uh, back in 1910, right northwest of the city of Lake Elsinore. I went over there and looked. Lake Elsinore. Are they talking about this one way up here? No. This shows a 6.0, 19 or 1769. Either that date's wrong. I don't. I don't see why it would be wrong. But that is way north of the Lake Elsinore area where they claimed the uh, earthquake activity struck back in 1910. There was another one up here, 1855, a 6.0. But that's well off the uh, Lake, uh, well off the uh, specific fault system that we're talking about here. Also another one, 6.4, over in the Long Beach area, 1933. But I can't pull up, I can't find the supposed 6.0 back in 1910 that they're talking about. We got, we got this one, and it does kind of run up here along the uh, Elsinore Fault System, which runs up into this area here. You can see it kind of uh, extending up into the concrete jungles of L.A. up here and ending right about here near, uh, let's see what's towns we got here Santa Fe Springs area I don't like how that uh, it disappears as far as the faults go but yeah it ends right in this region and that's where the other fault system begins heading north so I don't see the 1910 earthquake I do see a 6.0 uh, but that's uh, much earlier it looks like 1769 okay I don't know how they would uh, figure that but either way look at the activity the lack of activity here along the Elsinore fault system we're missing it's accumulating and there's there hasn't been a big one here on this section in a while and with the activity occurring today and within the last couple weeks here with a swarming of movement on segments of the Elsinore fault system here you got the main one here right that runs up to the north I don't know why they take it off the map but it runs all the way up north here and, and then to the south it's a pretty lengthy fault um, with this swarming activity, we need to be on watch down here, Southern California, uh, not only for that uh, segment, but also for their segments here to the east. And of course, you got the locked area of the San Andreas Fault that sits here, the southern segment. So let's look a little bit more closely here at the Palomar Mountain, Palomar Observatory. Uh, it's an observ astronomical observatory down there that uh, I guess it's closed right now to the public, but there is some activity kicking up here. Um, over the last day and also within the last 30 days. I want to show you guys the all magnitudes map here. We'll zoom in to this area of interest. 103 earthquakes, mostly microquakes. We did have a couple twos and including a 3.0 earthquake uh, within the swarming within the last 30 days. Now, the depth of these earthquakes here, very consistent with the uh, Typical shallow faults here in Southern California, about four to six kilometers below the surface. Although some activity in the deeper range over here to the west, 14 kilometers for that activity um, in the, uh, I can't, I guess it's really a, a separate swarming, if you will. When you look at the map of the, uh, of the region, it looks like it's separate here on the map. There's a little distance, a little gap between these two swarms, but you got to remember these segments here uh, are all one in the same, the Elsinore fault system with different segments. So uh, this area, got to watch pretty closely here. It's a super lengthy fault zone, and once again, the activity is missing. There's no 6.0 activity here, and that thing is capable of producing a 6.5 to 7.5 quake, right? And intervals every 250 years. But that's weird. It's entered just northwest of the city of Lake Elsinore, 1910. But it's not It's not there. That's odd. Very odd. Lake Elsinore, yeah, 20, 30 miles up here to the north. 40 miles, probably. 6.0. Is that the date? I don't know. Um, so, yeah, just be on guard, folks. A lot of movement uh, taking place in Southern California overnight. And with that swarming of activity, it's something to watch pretty closely uh, because... Uh, this, this fault system runs up, like I mentioned, up here into the uh, concrete jungles where there's nothing but, uh, well, 
you get you guessed it concrete and houses and I don't know not my type of lifestyle up there but uh, there's a lot of people that live there and a 7.5 earthquake within that region would definitely do some uh, some damage through that highly populated area swarming activity could be a could be an indicator of something uh, potentially popping down here very soon we like to watch these uh, swarms very closely uh, doesn't happen all the time but a lot of times we do see some swarming activity prior to a large quake uh, the rest of Southern California pretty active like I mentioned the 3.5 up here in Redlands just off the San Andreas Fault some activity as well of course the San Andreas Fault looks pretty quiet a little bit of movement around the Banning area on the Pacific side and the North American side of this plate boundary uh, the San Andreas Fault southern segment down here in the south part very south part of California not a whole lot of movement in the Salton Sea or the Imperial Fault probably seismic zone around the Salton Sea looks pretty quiet as well uh, working our way up to the north uh, some movement around the Ridgecrest area once again the Coso volcanic activity has kind of died down we had seen some swarming here over the last couple weeks within this region uh, actually a pretty good amount of swarming near some uh, volcanic activity at least on the map you can see a, a lot of historical volcanic activity within this swarming region kind of looks like we're looking at Mars here or maybe uh, a moon somewhere on a different planet but uh, definitely some volcanic activity there historically where that swarming activity has taken place there let's back out of here and go to the uh all magnitudes once again over the last 24 and uh, some sporadic activity once again kicking up into the nevada area uh, around tonopah and also the long valley super volcano within the within actually within the caldera as well a little bit of movement here a little swarming activity we got to zoom in pretty close here I was out here uh, earlier this year driving around the caldera uh, it, it's pretty crazy if you go to uh, the Google area hold on one second here folks another earthquake Missy Mimi's was just telling me about a uh, 3.8 just coming in to the seismographs here in Northern California uh, looks like a uh, definitely activity ramping up here along the west coast I want to show you guys on the Petrolia station uh, this seismograph station kicking up a 3.8 earthquake on the map hold on a second here it's just scrolling up around the bend I might have to speed up these scrolls but yeah on the globe a 3.8 earthquake coming into the northern California area that's going to be this Petrolia station pretty significant spike kicking up here right there on that station 3.8 right now as we speak let's go ahead and look at the activity in the uh, northern california region where that 3.8 struck some deep movement once again into the cascadia 18.3 uh, kilometers for that depth looking pretty significant there for activity we we're just talking about that a little bit earlier how some activity was kicking up on the seismographs but not being reported I don't think these guys can hide the bigger quakes when it comes to the uh, uh, seismographs. It's probably put out here as a preliminary earthquake. Automatic review, 3.8 at a depth of 18.3 kilometers. So we'll watch that area pretty closely as well. West Coast just been lighting up like crazy between the north and the south part of the state. Uh, so got to be on guard out here along the California region. Um, what else we got here? We talked about all the movement down in Southern Cal, also some activity here in the Long Valley Super Volcano region. Uh, that activity within the caldera, I was talking about how I went down there uh, earlier this year. There's not a whole lot down there, and you wouldn't even know you were in a super volcano uh, unless you were, uh, well, of course, educated on it. It's pretty, uh, pretty desolate out there, not a whole lot of uh, scenery, but... Uh, yeah, looking at that swarm of quakes kicking up here into the caldera area of Yellowstone. 16.3 kilometers way up north for a deep 2.6 outside of Mono, Mono Lake. Uh, up into the northern part of the states, Washington, some activity kicking up there as well throughout the state. And also the uh, Seattle Fault System showing some deep movement on that as well. Got a 1.4 pretty deep into the subduction zone of the northern part of the Cascadia 43 kilometers for a depth up there that's pretty crazy pretty crazy 
Uh, also some activity here in the Yellowstone area, a little microquake showing up here on the map of 0.9. Go ahead and check out uh, the activity here on the map here. It doesn't, uh, doesn't look like it's popping up here yet, but uh, specifically Yellowstone looks pretty quiet. There's not a whole lot of movement kicking up there at the moment on the seismographs. Looking around the rest of the country real quick. Uh, I don't want to make this too lengthy. It's already starting out pretty long. Some activity throughout the uh, Oklahoma, Kansas, and down into the Pecos, Texas area, where we had a 3.7 last night. Uh, also, the East Coast looks pretty quiet. New Madrid zone quite as well. The rest of the globe, we did see some seismic uh, increase in activity into the South America region. The Peru Chile Trench showing some deep activity. A couple fours there, well deep into this major subduction zone of South America. Puerto Rico has gone uh, almost absolutely quiet with only two earthquakes. That's very odd for this region. Uh, normally we see at least, uh, at least a little bit more throughout the area, but only two two pointers within the last 24 hours on that all magnitude map. Activity in the Hawaii area uh, continues to ramp up along with the west coast. Southeast flank showing a little significant amount of earthquakes as well. And a little earthquake out around the Loihi Seamount, 1.6 out there. Notice the lack of activity here in the northwestern part of the Pacific Ring of Fire, except for this one right at the point, 10 kilometers for a 4.2. Uh, some older activity along the Fiji Islands area and up through the Indonesia area, uh, but I think west coast should be on guard today with the north and south movement kicking up here. Uh, not only in the southern part, like I mentioned, but also up here in the north. It's a uh, pretty good indicator of some pressure increases out here. Uh, some significant, well, not significant, but definitely a, a renewal of pressure here along the West Coast. So be on guard today, Southern California, Northern California, West Coast area, as we see this activity increase. Uh, Trimmer map from last night did show some activity kicking up in the Cascadia with about 54 epicenters once again into the southern end. And as I said before, I expect this number to probably be on the increase here, specifically in Northern California due to this activity we're seeing today. The 3.8 just a couple minutes ago off the coast of Northern California uh, should be a little bit larger number here in the trimmer department. All right, guys, have a good day. Stay safe. We will chat you guys a little bit later unless something else happens. Um, we'll be back uh, with an update video this evening. Take care and uh, stay safe out there. It's a pretty crazy day. We'll chat you guys later.